Alright, so in this presentation I'm going to go over how to calculate um, heat loss through a surface um, using U-factor and some other factors, uh, and also go over heating degree days and how that impacts um, heating loads as well. Alright, so first, um, if remember with, um, with R values, okay, so with R values you can add them. And so if I had these three um, layers here, Right, so I have an R3.5 layer, R2.5, and an R1, and I lay them on top of each other. What is the total R value, and what is the total U value? So see if you can do that, and be careful with the U value. Okay, so the R value, very straightforward, right, so we just add the R's, right, so these th three R's, you, you lay R on top of each other, you're just going to add them. So this combined, it acts as one R7 surface, okay? And remember with u, the u factor, in order to get the u factor from this, we need to take this total r and just invert it, and that gives us our u, right? So u is 1 over r, which is 1 over 7, which is 0.143. Now remember our units are BTUs per square foot per degree Fahrenheit per hour. The units are actually important to remember here, so I want you to keep track of those. Okay, so that's our total r, and you could do any number of surfaces here. You could do 10 different layers, and you just add all the r's, and then you invert that and you get the U, okay? So let's see how this impacts heating loads. Okay, so if I want to calculate the heat loss um, over the course of one hour through a surface, you need to use this formula. This is really, really important, really fundamental to calculating um, like HVAC and building loads and designing a system and so forth. And that is Q equals UA delta T, or Q dot equals UA delta T. So the heat loss, or heat load, in BTUs per hour is the U factor times the area in square feet times the difference in temperature. It's a pretty simple formula. It's not always easy to get all these different factors. Um, but once you do have the factors, the, the calculation is not too bad, right? So we only have three things here. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so what's the heat loss? If we have that same surface, remember it's a, a, a R7 or U of a 0.143. So if I have 100 square feet of it, and the temperature difference on either side of that surface is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so you're just going to apply this formula. Feel free to press pause and do that. And we get UA delta T. Uh, that's a, sorry, a little typo there. Uh, there was the extra Z. So we take UA delta T. 0.143 is our U. Our a, a is area, it's 100 square feet, right? So we have 10 by 10, or square, sorry, 100 square feet here. And then we have 10 degrees Fahrenheit, <coughs> excuse me, that gives us 143 BTUs per hour. Really easy. Okay, same surface, but the, now the delta T is 20. So what is my um, heat load at that, uh, under those uh, circumstances? So same formula, but 0.143 times 100 square feet, but this time is times 20, so our heat loss is 286, so it's twice that. So you notice we double the, temp the delta T when we double the heat loss. Okay, what if the temperature difference is 20 degrees and the surface is 200 square feet instead of 100 square feet? So we double the surface area, and here we have double the temperature, right? So we do the same formula, and we end up with, we double it again. So as you can see, the heat transmission increases with increased U, right? So increased U means more heat transmission, it means worse insulation, right? So we decrease the R, that increases the U. If we increase the area and we increase the delta T. And this should be pretty intuitive, really, think about it. If we, if we d decrease um, the R value, of course we're gonna lose more heat, all else being equal. If you have a bigger surface area, of course you're gonna lose more heat, all else being equal. And then temperature difference, remember, the higher the delta, the more that heat's gonna to wanna to move across the surface, okay? So that's your basic heat load calculation. You can apply heating degree days to that as well, and there was a video on heating degree days, but I'm gonna go over these, just kind of a little summary of heating degree days. So um, this video, which I'm recording in, in Delaware, we live in a heating dominated climate. <clears throat> Heating, heating degree days gives you kind of an indication of the sort of average um, outdoor air temperature in a climate relative to the desired indoor uh, temperature. 
Okay. Um, so this is how you calculate it. I'm not going to actually require you to do this calculation yet, but we will do this eventually. So basically to do the heating degree days for one day, you take the average temperature for the day. You subtract that from your base temperature, which is whatever your um, whatever you need to heat your building to. Okay, this is a, a little um, subtle here that our for residential buildings our base temperature is the standard base temperature 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and here's why. Um, with a residential building, you really only need to heat it up into about 65 degrees. Um, above six at in addition to that heating there's all these other uh, uh, heating loads inside that are providing heat to the building so you have people inside they're emitting heat from our bodies right so all that radiant heat that we talked about before any electronics that's generating heat uh, waste heat um, uh, any cooking that you do taking showers whatever um, pets, plants, all these things add heat to the building. Uh, sunlight coming in through the window. Okay, So all of these things add heat to the building and that generally like the rule of thumb in the ener energy industry is that you just heat the building to 65 and all of the other interior heating loads will heat the building up to about 70 degrees, you know, 68, 69, 70 degrees. Um, so your heating system just needs to heat the building up to 65 and everything else will heat it up the rest of the way. So that's why we use the base temperature of 65. People don't aren't generally comfortable at 65, uh, especially in the winter, um, but that's all you have to heat your building to and then above and then the, the internal loads just heat your build your building up the rest of the way uh, and, and and we'll get into this later but a commercial building you may only have to heat it up to 45 degrees and then you have all these lights and all these people let's say you're in like a, a gym at a basketball game um, that you might only need to heat it up to like 30 degrees because all that body heat's going to heat it up the rest of the way so that would be our base temperature okay so anyway that's future uh, reference but uh, for residential buildings, 65 is our standard base temperature. Okay, So in order to calculate the heating degree days, you take the base temperature, which is normally 65, you subtract the average temperature that entire 24-hour period, uh, and that's your heating degree days. Pretty straightforward. So let's look at a quick example. The daily temperature average one day is 40 degrees. What would the heating degree days be on that day? You just take 65 minus 40. So we would have 25 degree days that day. That's it. Okay. Now you can do this for any period of time. So you add up um, the heating degree days over the course of a day, and you add them up over the course of the whole entire heating season, or the entire year, excuse me, um, and that's your total heating degree days for the year. You can also do it by the hour and so forth, but we won't get into that right now. So the HDD is determined by adding up all the indiv individual HDDs throughout the year. So this is a chart that shows the HDDs each month in Wilmington, Delaware. So January through December, okay, from left to right, and then the heating degree is here on your y-axis. So you can see in January, the average in Wilmington is about a little over 800 heating degree days. February, about 600. March, and so on. And then the summer, you have little to none, which makes sense, right, because you don't, the average temperature is generally going to be above 65. And then as you get colder and colder, the heating degree days go up. And this is just a, um, a numerical representation of, of this chart. Okay. So um, different climate zones have different heating degree days. And here's a map of uh, some heating, of heating degree day zones um, in the U.S., right? So we have this, uh, the, the maroon and red is like 1,000 HDD, purple, and pink and whatever that is is about eleven thousand, right? So this should again make intuitive sense. We're down in Florida and southern Texas, like we don't doesn't get that cold down there. And so you're down to like a thousand or less heating degree days. Whereas you go up to northern North Dakota and you're above eleven thousand, right? So these roughly correlate to the climate zones in the US. Um, you can see like, you know, the the mountain west over here, right? So the Rocky Mountains, you're gonna have high elevation, which is gonna be colder. Um, but anyway, the key 
what I want you to remember about heating degree days is that it's a general general indication of how uh, cold uh, a climate is and how much heating you need to provide to keep uh, a comfortable indoor air temperature. Okay, so here's how we can apply them to a seasonal heating calculation. So our, remember our our heating load was UA delta T. Our seasonal heating load calculation is UA HDD times 24. Um, and 24 hours per day converts that to the proper unit. Okay, so UA, remember UA delta T, really important. That's BTUs per hour. This is going to be just BTUs. So let's do an example. So the annual heat loss in Wilmington. So what is the annual heat loss in Wilmington? If you have a 10 by 10 wall of that same surface, that's 0.143 of U factor. Okay, so we have HDD of 4,500 for Wilmington. So feel free to pause, press pause and apply that equation. Okay, so it's just UA HDD times 24. So U is 0.143, it's 100 square feet, 4,500 degree days times 24. That's going to give us about 1.54 times 10 to the 6 or 1.54 MMBTUs. Okay, so let's do what happens if we double the R value, which is going to cut the U va value in half. All right, same formula, but we cut the U value in half, and we end up with 0.77 MMBTUs. Okay, let's take the same surface, but down in Florida, okay, and the HDD for Florida, or Orlando, Florida, is 540. So what happens if we have 100 square feet at a 0.0715 U factor in Florida? In Orlando, excuse me. So you take the 0 0.0715 is the U, the area in square feet, and this time we're multiplying times 540, okay, times 24, and we end up with 0 0.0925. You can see it's it's dropping here, right? So we in decrease the U, and it's going to drop our heating load. If we decrease the HDD, it's going to drop our heating load. And finally, what if I have four 20 by 20 walls in Wilmington? So this would be you know kind of a small house. So four, four 20 by 20 walls in Wilmington. You do some quick math there. Again, it's the same, 0 0.0715. Now we have 1,600 square feet of surface, 4,500 degree days, 24 hours. Multiply all that out, you end up with 12.35 MMBTU. So you can see heat transmission is going to increase as you increase the U vector, as you increase the area, and as you increase HDD. And this should make intuitive sense, right? Worse insulation means lower U, or excuse me, means a higher U, which means you're gonna increase your heat loss. Makes sense. Bigger surface area, increase your heat loss. Increase HDD means it's relatively colder, so you're gonna increase your heat loss as well. Finally, you can do the same, uh, similar calculation over any period of time. Um, if you just wanna, if you have any number of hours at a, delta, at a given delta T, you can calculate the heat loss over that time. And that's just UA delta T times time in hours, right? So do a quick example. So what's the heat loss over one hour if you have 100 square feet and the temperature difference is 10 degrees at a 0.143 U. Again, it's just UA delta T times T. So U 0.143 times 100 square feet times 10 degrees times 10 hours. And we end up with, notice this is BTUs, not BTUs per hour, right? So if you, if you, how much heat do you lose over 100 hours? Same thing, but it's going to be increased by a factor of 10. Right? So again, heat transmission increases with increased U, increased area, increased delta, like before, and increased time. And again, this I know it's a lot of like formulas and concepts kind of flowing around, but if you sort of take a step back and think about this intuitively, it should make sense. All right. we, we decrease the R means we increase the U which means the insulation is worse, which means we're going to lose more heat. If we increase the surface area, we're going to lose more heat. If we increase the delta, again, heat's going to flow from warmer to colder areas, and the higher the delta, the more it's going to flow, we're going to lose more heat. And finally, if it's more time at that delta, you're going to lose more heat. Okay, so there's your um, overview um, of how to calculate heat loss over the course of an hour, over the course of the season, and over any number of time, any amount of time, and also hopefully have a good sense of what a heating degree day is.